Assalamu alaikum. Good evening everyone. Welcome to another episode of The Hina Siddiqui Show on Canada One TV. उम्मीद करती हूँ आप सब लोग खुश होंगे खैरियत से होंगे जहाँ पर भी होंगे एक और एपिसोड के साथ हाजिर हो गए हैं हम एक और शख्सियत के साथ आज क्या बात करने वाले हैं हम हम बात करेंगे आज कनाडा के बारे में यहाँ की पॉलिटिक्स के बारे में और स्पेशली हमारे जो प्रोविंस है ओंटेरियो के बारे में इसी सिलसिले में हमारे साथ मौजूद है हमारे एम पी फ्रॉम ओटवा सेंटर असलम हिना मिस्टर यासिर वेलकम टू माई शो और बहुत इंतजार के बाद हमारा ये इंटरव्यू कंडक्ट हुआ है तो खुश आमदीद बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया एंड थैंक यू फॉर योर प्रेजिस्टेंस एंड इंसिस्टेंस दैट वी मेक दिस इंटरव्यू हैपन so i'm very happy that we're doing it alhamdulillah thank you so much uh tonight i'm going to talk about a little bit of a, you know a controversial talk and of course i wanted to know about your background as well and uh, especially those new people who have migrated and uh, uh, going to be a part of the politics soon they have to make a decision as well so we are starting from the grassroots and i want to uh, let my audience know who are you and uh, how did you start it so i am uh, like many of our audience right now watching this i am also an immigrant to canada uh-huh. uh, i came uh, from pakistan with my family in 1988 i was 15 years old at that time now people can do the math how right, old i am right <laughs> <laughs> and uh, like any family who mm-hmm. has immigrated to canada my family wanted to to make sure that we we live a better life that uh, we are able to live in a free country where we can do whatever we want to right um you know both my parents uh, are are lawyers they retired now mm-hmm. um and they wanted to make sure that my brother my sister and i can live uh, in a in a place and get good education and yeah. be successful so uh, that's how we started our life i finished my high school in niagara falls ontario then i went to mcmaster university uh, where i did two degrees and then went to law school in in ottawa at right. university of ottawa where i became a lawyer and decided to make ottawa my home and right. i've been living there since 1996 uh, i did my masters there right. as well practice law and in 2007 i decided to run for political office okay. uh, at the provincial level right. and i was elected as member of provincial parliament right. in ottawa center mm-hmm. which i served till 2018 and uh, for 11 years while i was an mpp i was deeply honored uh, to be a member of the cabinet uh, as well in the last liberal government i served as minister of labor mm-hmm. minister of community safety and correctional services mm-hmm. as government house leader but most importantly as the attorney general uh, of uh, ontario that was a quite a difficult role it's a it's a very challenging role yes. it's a very important role in in our system of democracy and and to become is essentially to be the chief legal officer or, or the minister of justice uh, for the largest province in in Canada it taught me a lot it gave me a lots of experience um then i ran uh, for few years a, a national foundation called the institute for canadian citizenship mm-hmm. and then in 2021 i ran again federally mm-hmm. uh in my same riding ottawa center and i was elected as member of parliament and that's the role i'm serving at the moment okay uh, now let's come to your experiences like you know how was your experience being a politician uh being active member of a community and uh, uh like you know trying to be a voice for others so how was your experience as like you know as a leader uh, my experience has been that um our democracy is there to serve everyone mm-hmm. um the one of the big reasons i ran is wanted to make sure that everyone's perspective mm-hmm. is represented where decisions are made and that's why i felt as somebody who was in his early 30s at the time i was practicing lawyer i bring unique experience as an mm-hmm. immigrant as a person of color um and i wanted to make sure that the perspective that i bring which is shared by many in our community right. is 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 present and um you know when i decided to run the first time i fought a nomination i was successful then uh, in the election and what i was genuinely surprised to learn in my community that people were n- not as interested in my background but wanted to know how i'm going to serve them 
you know, how I'm going to improve our healthcare system, how we're going to make sure that our public education system is the best um, in the country or in the world. So people were really interested in ideas and that is a, a very empowering feeling as a Canadian that regardless of when you came and how right. long you've lived right. in this country, people want to know, hey, are you going to work hard for us? Yes. And so when I got elected, that's what I, I, I uh, uh, focused and spent my energies in making sure that the community that I represent in Ottawa was well represented and their views were front and center. So what made you successful as you told me that you were MPP and now you are MP. So what were uh, the you know number of uh, reasons behind it about your uh, you know leadership? I, I, I think it's, it's two things. One, uh, hard work. Okay. There's no substitute. There's no shortcut. I'm somebody who's known to work hard. I knock on doors pretty much every week in my writing in between elections as I did it when I was a member of provincial parliament, when I was a minister and I still do it as a member of parliament. The reason that's important is I think good politicians, good leaders listen. It's important. Our job is to serve the people that elect us and it's important to listen to them, see what issues that they are talking about and be their voice in the parliament and that's something I've always done. Right, as now you are um, going to enroll yourself for the uh, provincial you know, leadership from your uh, government. So what do you think, why you think you are eligible to yeah. <laughs> run for it? So that's a very good question. So as many uh, listeners uh, uh, watching the show may know that Ontario Liberal Party will be uh, selecting a new leader. That mm -hmm. leadership race will start soon and I'm um, exploring that opportunity. Right. Um, I'm receiving tremendous amount of support and encouragement to take on that role. And I think the big reason is that I am known as someone who is a team builder, mm -hmm. who knows how to build a team. I also have experience. I have been in government. I know how decisions are made. And government is not easy. Making decisions is about choices. Right. And that, that, that's an experience that money cannot buy. And I have been there as to, as to how difficult decisions are made. And lastly, I have the confidence. I have the confidence to build our party and to present uh, a platform uh, that speak to Ontarians about their needs, a better healthcare system, an education system that, that ensures that our children have a future and to build an economy that creates good paying jobs for all Ontarians. I have the confidence and the experience to do that work and uh, that's why I, lots of people are encouraging me to seek the leadership. Can you please share about your accomplishments uh, so far, what you have done in your career? Yeah, my gosh. I, I mean, I can I can talk a, about a lot of, lot of things, but I'll give you a few examples. Sure. For example, when I was Minister of Labor, uh, I increased the minimum wage in uh, Ontario. It okay. was it was stuck at a fairly low rate at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, had not been increased uh, for four years. I did it in a way that labor, anti-poverty groups, and businesses all were in agreement that it is the right thing to do. And again speaks to my capacity of bringing people together even those individuals who may not disagree with and finding common ground which I think is an important attribute for, for a leader. As, as the Attorney General of Ontario I uh, uh, put an end to race-based carding. This was the practice where police will stop uh, brown and black men in particular and collect their personal information just because of their skin color or if they lived in a poor neighborhood right we we argued that that is wrong that is violates people's rights yes. and we put an end to that and that was something that I spearheaded uh, and I think Ontario is a better when place was it? Uh, that was done in in 2015 okay uh, around 2015 um, and we did it without the courts telling us we did it because we listened to community advocates and we listened to activists who were saying this is this is wrong and this should not happen in a in a place like uh, in in Ontario Lastly, and this is uh, quite topical, you know, as the Attorney General of Ontario, I think first time in Canadian history, we laid charges, uh, hate crime related charges mm -hmm. uh, against an individual who was spreading Islamophobia. All right. uh, and, you know, I think it has parallel to the incident just happened today, unfortunately, yes. where uh, someone is seen on a video ripping pages of Quran. Yes. This individual was inciting and motivating people to do the, to the same. Yes. And we were able to uh, get conviction, uh, criminal conviction for spreading, spreading hate against Muslims. Uh, so these are the kind of things, just to state few, that I, was, I have been able to do 
in various roles and positions that I have held in government. What do you think we need to do in schools environment like to change this perspective you know this Islamophobia is spreading really like you know this is very strong and uh, I have seen I have realized that you know even though you know practicing of hijab practicing of religion is uh, though we live in a multi-diverse you know community but what do you think what needs to change yeah so first of all i think we need to recognize the fact that we live in in a country where rights are to be respected and and one of the key rights that's uh, outlined in the charter of rights and freedom is the uh, the freedom of of speech and freedom of practicing your own faith freedom of religion that's a very important right that we we have in in our in our constitution but with it also comes that we need to create understanding um, Islamophobia exists in because our society. It's starting at the school time, like at the very young age, yeah. and these young kids, you know, become an adult, and that's how it, it's going on. Yeah. So, what do you think the education system can, you know, do something about it? As a, you know, you if you are going to be the, you know, the leader of Ontario, then uh, what do you think? I think we what we need to do is we need to uh, make it part of our curriculum. Uh, we need to make sure that there's uh, there's there's education around Islamophobia, around anti-Semitism, about making sure that we are teaching about all faith and respect, respect within those uh, between boundaries faith. of yeah yeah yes. because like I said that's that's the essence uh, of rights we have uh, in in Canada but as I was saying we know that Islamophobia exists in our society and we need to make sure that in our schools across the province there's education Definitely. that is that's part of the curriculum Definitely. so that we can educate our students regardless of what faith they come about Islam about Judaism about Christianity Hinduism Sikhism all all faiths that are practiced in our province great answer well it's time for us to take a short break we will be back shortly you don't go anywhere keep watching the show Welcome back to the Hina Siddiqui Show on Canada One TV. Tonight we have with us MP Yasser Naqvi from Ottawa Centre. Welcome back. Thank you. So, so far we have talked about your uh, leadership and uh, your experiences. Now, now I want to talk about the process of your you know, leadership, the campaign you are going for. How can people uh, can be a part of it? That's a very good question. So Ontario Liberal Party will be soon starting the leadership uh, process to uh, select a new leader. Very recently at our party's uh, annual general meeting, the members decided that, the, that they will be electing a new leader by the process of one member, one vote. So everybody who becomes a member of the Ontario Liberal Party will have a direct vote in electing who our next leader is going to be, which is, I think, is a very powerful yes, tool it is. because people will have a direct uh, say as to mm -hmm. who the leader uh, is going to be. For that, people would have to become a member of the Ontario Labour Party. Membership is free. Okay. And no cost? No cost. Okay. No cost, you know. No $10, $20? No, no. <laughs> democracy should be accessible to, to everyone. All right. And the only requirement is that you are 14 years of age and older, older okay. and a resident of Ontario. So that means you can be a Canadian citizen, 
You can be a permanent resident or even an international student. As long as you're a resident of Ontario, you can become oh, a right. member. Oh, for international students too. Like, Absolutely, okay. yes. It's open. And so, so when the time will come, uh, people uh, people can and can vote. And so that's that's the process. And so as I am traveling the pro uh, province and meeting with people across our our great province, I'm encouraging people to become uh, members of the uh, Ontario Liberal Party. One of the easiest way you can uh, you can keep in contact with us is to visit my website, okay. which is yasirnakvi.ca. Y a s i r n a q v i dot c a. Perfect. Well, um, now I want to come to your leadership again. Like yeah. you know, what is your agenda? Like if you will be the leader, what you gonna do? What different you gonna do? What the the current situation is really bad. Like hospitals, you know, education system, everything is affected. And of course, because of the COVID as well. So, what do you think? Like you know, your your uh, leadership goals will be and your vision for a better Canadian environment. Absolutely, and thank you for asking that question because I think in the end of the day, that is that is the the key thing as to why somebody like me wants to seek the leadership. What, how, what am I going to do different? Yes, exactly. Uh, than what we're seeing under Doug last Ford's, four years. Yeah, yes. last four or five years five under years, Doug Ford's yes. uh, government. And and as I am talking to Ontarians, there there are three things which are very loud and clear that uh, people are asking that we need to focus on. Number one. It's a big number one. It's healthcare. People want access to good uh, hospitals. People want Absolutely. access to family doctors. You know, there are two million Ontarians right now who do not have a family doctor. That is a huge issue because that's a gateway to to having access to good healthcare system. So what we need to do is we need to invest in our hospitals. We need to invest in our nurses and our doctors so that those services are available. So that people are not waiting. Over 20 hours when there's an emergency at their local hospital. So that's number one. Right. Number two is education. It's another very big responsibility of provincial government. Our future depends on good education system, and in in my view, it has to be a public education system where kids are getting the best education possible. Ontario used to have that, by the way. You know, my success right. that you were asking about right. is all in a public education system. I was 15 years old when I came in Canada and look what I'm able to accomplish. That's the kind of opportunity I want to create for my children and for everyone's children because that is the way we're now, going we don't to make have sure. more resources at the school. Like kids are totally deprived. Th that's and that's what we need to to invest in our teachers in education workers we need to make sure that class sizes are are small and that's what we're seeing with from from Doug Ford as the premier of this province that both in healthcare and in education he's under investing yes. he's not he's not in putting the appropriate investment uh, to to allow for a robust publicly funded system which provides equal opportunities to everyone the third thing i would focus is creating economic opportunity, right? We need to make sure that good jobs Definitely. are being created in our province, not only for today, but tomorrow. I'll give you in a one quick example. We know that climate change is a real issue. Yes. Um, we need to address climate change. There is a great economic opportunity mm -hmm. um, where all the work is happening to create net zero technology so we can reduce our carbon footprint. Yes, yes, yes. Ontario should be the leader. We need to invest in that more than just electric vehicles. That's important. But there's a lot of technological things that needs to happen. And with our educated workforce, I believe Ontario can lead in that revolution that's taking place around the world. So what do you think where the money is going? <laughs> well, that's a very good question. I would like to ask the Premier where the money is going. I mean, most recently, the Auditor General of Ontario came out with a report and they said just in healthcare, Ford government is under spending by $22 billion. $22 billion. So I don't know what they're doing with that money. They are putting their money either away or they're giving it to for profit companies as they're doing by privatizing our healthcare system. That is not what's going to help people, what's going to help people is by investing uh, these public dollars in our hospitals, in our nurses, in our doctors who provide these essential care. My next question to you is what inspires you? Like this is a hectic uh, 
job, I would say, a public, you know, service. And uh, of course, lifestyle matters as well. But uh, this is like uh, so many numbers of hours you're investing, you know, family life, you know, professional life, how you're managing it, plus what inspires you on a daily basis. Yeah. What keeps you going? Yeah, that's a very good question. It is public service, right? Yes. Um, in in country like Canada, everybody who gets into public office, whether it's federal, provincial or municipal level, we do so because we want to build a better community. And, and so the sacrifices of my parents inspired me. Right? They made a big decision by coming to Canada, right? right and they, right. they did it because they wanted their children to have a better life, mm -hmm. which, which we are. Yes. And, and, and so I want to um, take their sacrifice by leaving the country that they were born in and lived most of their life to ensure that that success mm -hmm. is available to everyone. I have two young kids. Mm -hmm. My son Rafi will be 11 uh, in April. Mashallah. My daughter Eliana just turned seven. Nice. They inspire me because it's their future that I'm working so yes, hard. Yes, definitely. And, you know, they're young, but they're so supportive because yes. they see what daddy is doing. Right. Right. And I see them. I see um, their friends when I go to uh, drop them at school or pick uh -huh. them up. Those children inspire me because they're so young, they're so innocent, the world is at their disposal. The decisions that we make today about our healthcare system, about our education system, about our environment is decisions we're making about their future. And so those are the things that motivates me because when I'm older and they turn to me and say, Daddy, what did you do about that? I want to be able to say, you know what, we tried our very best right. and look, things are a, a bit better than where we were things before. Right. Uh, yes, there are a lot of, of still percentage of, you know, Ontarians are still not voting. They're yeah. not a part of the politics and they think like, you know, it's not going to make a difference if they don't vote. Like, what do you want to say about it? How true it is and how you think it's... Hina, you're so right. People do not vote. Last election, provincial election, only 43% people that, voted. That's true. You know, yeah. and it really... It's disappointing. It is very... It saddens me, yes. right? We, we are so lucky to live in a country like Canada where all of us have a right to vote. And this is what I tell people, especially young people, that when they don't vote, it's not like they did not vote. They gave their vote to someone else. Because a decision is still going to get made, whether 10,000 people vote or only 100 people vote. A decision, somebody will get elected in our, in our system. And when somebody does not vote, they're giving their votes to someone else. And when you give your vote to someone else, guess what? That other person is going to make decision in their best interest, right. not yours. Right. So please go out and vote. Get to know uh, our political leaders. They're people just like me. We are your neighbors. We right. are your friends. We are we are not some uh, alien type, <laughs> right. right? And our inspiration and our ideas come from our community members. And so that's why in this particular race, I'm asking people to please join us. Right. Um, you know, I'm just like you. Help me if you if you like how the ideas that I'm presenting. If you think that my experience could help build a better province. Please go visit yasernakwi.ca and, and, and sign up and, and join our team. We have so many young people joining our campaign. It is so exciting to hear their ideas because it's for them we're doing all this hard work. Sure, Mr. Nakwi. Last question to you. Uh, as uh, most of uh, the community, like people, they say that, you know, when you are coming to the doors, all the leaders I'm talking about, coming at the door knocking, you made a lot of promises. But, you know, it doesn't work like that. The promises are not made, like, you know, and the promises uh, leaders make, they are, that's the reason they said, like, you know, for not voting or something, it's not going to make a difference. What do you want to say about it? Well, I mean, that's more reason for you to vote, because if, if a politician is not keeping their promise, then let's make sure you vote and not elect them again. Right. <laughs> Definitely. That's the accountability. I Definitely. Mean, here's the beautiful thing. There's one thing guaranteed in Canada that there will be an election every four years. Right. 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 Many other countries in the world don't have that kind of guarantee, but right. we do. So there is a mechanism of accountability. That's why, as I mentioned to you earlier, I knock on doors almost on a weekly basis in my community in Ottawa Centre. Why? Because I just don't want to show up at your door come election time when I need your vote. I want to hear from you now that you've elected me as to what can I do for you? How can I help you? And, and that's the kind of service that I will bring 
if I'm elected as the leader of Ontario Labour Party and, and eventually the Premier uh, of this province. And that's the kind of accountability I will help create between my party within the Ontario Labour Party and people who will be elected within our party. What message would you like to give to our youth to be a part of the, uh, you know, this uh, campaign or uh, the system of the politics uh, and uh, in our, for our community as well? Yeah, well listen, the system is for you. Uh, this system is yours to have um, own it. Uh, make sure that you are thinking of running for office because the, the quality of the system is best reflected people who get involved in it. And we live in a very diverse province. We need to make sure that our democracy is also representative of the community uh, we live in. And that's why I have been so motivated to be in politics. That's why I ran the first time when I ran in 2007 and continue to serve um, uh, our communities across the province. That is why I'm exploring the possibility of seeking the leadership. I will say again, please join us. Um, I want to hear your ideas. I want you to be part of our team. Please go visit yasirnakvi.ca. Thank you so much, Mr. Yasir. Thank you. <laughs> Well, ये थे हमारे साथ यासिर नकवी एम पी फ्रॉम ओटोआ सेंटर उम्मीद करती हूँ आज का सेशन आपको बहुत अच्छा लगा होगा बहुत ही इंस्पायरिंग रहा होगा एंड देन यू हैव लर्न अ लॉट फ्रॉम इट अगले हफ्ते फिर मुलाकात होगी अपना बहुत ख्याल रखिए गुड नाइट शबा खैर अल्लाह हाफिज कीप वॉचिंग कैनेडा वन टीवी